Legal Tech Genius is a show for those who want to hear the latest tech news and reviews and find out what tools can help your business. Join Peter and Belinda as they bring you technology tips, tricks and tools helping save you time, effort and money so you can focus on your business. Broadcast live from 6pm every Thursday, this is Eagle Tech Genius on eaglewavesradio.com.au. Don't go anywhere because we have Fiona Lewis coming up and we are going to be talking about the seven steps to a high converting website. I am so excited about that. We've had Fiona on before and she is fantastic. I am really excited as well. Don't go anywhere. We are on Eagle Tech Genius. You can follow on with us on hashtag Radio EW or at eaglewavesradio.com.au. Stream on your iPhone via the Live 365 app or you can visit us at Vivo Cafe 388 George Street. We will be back very soon. You're listening to Eagle Tech Genius on eaglewavesradio.com.au. Welcome back to Eagle Tech Genius. I'm super excited to have Fiona Lewis from Super Savvy Business back in the studio. Fiona, welcome again. Thank you very much, Peter. It's fantastic to be here again. (laughs) So good to have you back. We've got some very exciting things we're talking to you about tonight. I know. I know. Well, see, I always get very excited when I start talking techno geeky stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, so do we. <laughs> so Fiona is an expert content marketer. Um, she is an expert in, in all things online, SEO, web strategy. And uh, this evening, Fiona is going to give us her seven immutable website rules for a high converting site. Fiona, would you like to jump straight into it? We've yeah, got so much to talk about. Certainly. Look, guys, at the end of the day, um, you know, when people are surfing the web, you basically only have up to three seconds to grab their attention. It used to be seven, didn't it? Yeah. It used to be seven, well, and now it's three. Well, people's their, their attention spans must be getting lower. <laughs> Too much Facebook. <laughs> so it's really important that the minute people get to their, 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 your website, that they feel that it's a website worth looking into. So I often get people saying to me, look, I've built this website and it's not doing anything for me. I'm not getting any calls. I'm not getting any business. I'm not making any sales. You know, what what am I doing wrong? And I have a look at it and I can see straight away that they're breaking a lot of the very, very basic rules when it comes to web design and, and setting up your website so it converts. So coming on tonight, I really just wanted to share my top 10 strategies. Now, obviously, I could go on and on. There's a lot more, but um, let's, let's start at the first one. If someone's arriving on your on your website, first of all, make sure you've got a really compelling headline and website copy that's going to grab their attention. Okay, so rather than saying, welcome to our website, um, yawn, <laughs> what can you come up with which is going to grab their attention? You know, attention all business owners. You know, are you frustrated with, um, you know having a website that doesn't convert you know (laughs) that's going to speak loud volumes to a website a a business owner so So highlighting the problem exactly you you click on you get that's called a copy click where you actually stop people in their tracks like attention stop or all of those sorts of things but Mm -hmm. using the words you and your don't get caught up in talking about we and i all the time (laughs) yeah i I read in a uh, in a web marketing forum i think it was yesterday that someone put the word booyah as their title and it increased their conversions by 200%. Exactly, because people aren't expecting to see that sort of thing, are they? No, no. And I think it was just that it, it broke the mold and it got them to stop and think and read the rest of the copy. Yeah. And in regards to the copy too, what you've got to think is people are, if people are looking to see within the first few seconds whether or not your site is going to give them the solutions to their problems. So yeah. make sure your copy is scannable. And when I say that, make sure you haven't got big blocks of dense text um, use subheadlines, bold the most important phrases, yeah. have, use bullet points. All those sorts of things are really important because it makes it easy for people to scan through and find the content of your site and find out what it's about. So Perfect. great copy to grab the attention. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, people get caught up also in having these brochure websites where it's all really pretty. Really, we want it to be direct response. This yeah. is, this is a, you know, where you're actually asking people to take the action you want them to take. And that's very important, not just in design, but in your actual copy as well. Perfect. So that's that's my first tip. Um, the second thing is make it easy for the search engines because there's nothing worse than having a website that is set up poorly and the search engines can't scan through it to find out what your site is about or you're breaking uh, the rules that the search engines have in place. Um, because if you do any of those things, then your site's just knocking to rank and nobody will ever find you. Yeah. So... I'm going to talk Google just because it is one of the main search engines. So the first thing I'd suggest is to make sure your site is Google compliant. 
Um, little things like having a site map in your footer menu, um, having a contact page with not just a contact form, but actual a phone number or an address, especially if you sell things online, you must have a way for people to contact you. Yeah. And Google will actually read that address as well, won't it? It will read the text of That's the address. That's right. Even yeah. putting a Google map in is going to help you. So, Fiona, do you recommend putting your actual phone number and email there for even the spam bots to see or have something like a contact form? Or separating the email with the at as the actual written word, like happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah, what you, do you reckon? that is a problem. So yeah. if you don't want to put your email, then don't put it, but have a contact form, but definitely yeah. a phone number and an address Great. of some sort. Yep. Um, making sure your website loads quickly, because mm-hmm. uh, that's something that can really inhibit your site from uh, being able to rank well in the search engines. Uh, having making sure it's got what we call clean code in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this all does sound a little bit techno-geeky, but if if... You would like to have your webmaster, whoever looks after your website, go through and make sure your website is Google compliant. If you go to this web address, this will redirect to Google's actual address uh, where they basically list out clearly what your site should have and what it must not have. Mm -hmm. Now, the web address is www.supersavvybusiness.com forward slash webmaster dash guidelines. And that will redirect to the Google page. Yep. Uh, the other thing as far as making it easy for the search engines is, is ensuring that keywords that you're trying to rank for are prominent in your site, in mm-hmm. your page. So that means making sure the keywords are in the URL mm-hmm. of your web page, making sure that this is talking a bit techno-geeky here, but in, in things like the header tags, the page descriptions, in the actual body of your copy, yeah. have it in there, but don't shove it in so many times that it's considered to be spammy and don't have the exact same phrase 10 times. Yep. The rule of thumb is have it no more than once every 100 words. Okay. Okay. And one. you can check that with your web consultant if you're not sure what the he- header tags are yeah. and that kind of thing. So if, if you don't look after your site yourself and you don't know what it is exactly, whoever manages your site, just make sure you have your keywords there. So that's tip number two. Uh, the other thing, uh, my third tip is to make your website help you to be, build leads. And what I mean by that is... What are you doing to collect details from people who might come to your site but might not be ready to actually do business with you? So this is what we call having an opt-in. And the opt-in should be nice and juicy and actually um, be something that they really, really, really want. Mm -hmm. So subscribe to our newsletter. Mm -mm. Most people (laughs) don't want another newsletter arriving in in their email inbox. So think about your ideal customer's main problem that they're looking for solutions to and then create something you can give away for free in return for a name and an email address and generally speaking a first name and an email address is just about all you want to ask for Mm -hmm. now you could give that to them in the form of an e-book a report uh, an e-course it could be a series of videos you can you can deliver that content in lots and lots of different ways but try and think what is going to really tempt my ideal customer to give me the name and email address in order to have this thing, the opt-in. Yep. Start okay. building a relationship. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. But once you've got their name and email addresses, as you say, you can start to build a relationship yep. with them. And that's that no like trust factor. And it might be six months, 12 months. I've even had a customer come to me after 18 months of being on my database and yep. said, look, I really, really wanted to come to you, but it just wasn't the right time. And now it is. Yeah, exactly. So you've built up that relationship over time through your content marketing and yes. now they're a client. Yeah. And, and imagine if I hadn't collected their details, I may not have got their business in the exactly. long run. Exactly. Yep. So heading over to point four, uh, when you land on a website, you often don't see the whole website, do you? You often just see a small portion of it and the rest of it you'd have to scroll down to see. The bit that you actually see is known as, we call that above the fold, okay? Now, depending on the size of your screen, you might see certain smaller or larger amounts. So it's really important when you're designing your website that you have the very important information at the top fold of your site. So there should be some sort of call to action. So think about what is the main uh, action I want people to take when they come to my website? Is it that I want them to pick up the phone and call me? Is it that I want them to opt into my opt-in box, which is what we've just discussed? Think about what that action is and ensure that you have not just your logo, but an attention-grabbing headline and a call to action for the most important information. Uh, so when we considered all of that, um, 
talking about logos, sometimes I've seen logos that are really, really big. We don't need to have big logos. And sometimes that whole header area is way too wide. It can just be nice and narrow. Mm-hmm. So that's the, that's the big thing. I mean, yes, you need to have your branding there, but it's not the most important part of your page, is it? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. You've been listening to another Eagle Waves radio podcast. You can find more great podcasts, blog posts and information at our website www.eaglewavesradio.com.au We broadcast live five times a week from Vivo Cafe in Sydney CBD. If you're in the area, why not stop by and check us out? 